Angel is saying to you, don't panic. I'm with you. There's no need to fear. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I, your God, have a firm grip on you, and I am not letting go. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. I think part of trusting God is looking to the future with excitement, not worry and dread. We know that He is going to work out everything for His good, and in that joy is found. You have a purpose. Why God put you in that situation? Learn to trust His plan. God has a thousand ways to turn your situation around that you've never even thought of. Just because you don't see a way doesn't mean God doesn't have a way. Sometimes God will isolate you before He elevates you. You may think that everything is falling apart, but actually everything is falling into place. When you say you're working on yourself, what do you mean? Because if it's continuing the same routine that you've had for years in hope that you'll find what you're looking for within, then you're doing it all wrong. If you're working on yourself, then truly work on yourself. Start a journal. Begin saying no to things you don't want to do and make more time for things that you do. And if you don't know what you want, then do a brainstorm. Start cooking fresh meals and make effort to grab a coffee with your friend and call your mother to have that difficult conversation that you've been putting off for so long. Do some trauma work. Focus on ways to ease your anxiety. Go on walks, listen to health and positivity podcasts, watch comedy skits, read self-help books and romance novels, or thriller, or none at all if books aren't your thing. But the point is be in motion. It's not enough to continue the same routine that you've had for the last few years, because working on yourself requires effort. It requires change. It requires you to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. It requires you to talk about the difficult stuff, the scary stuff, the painful and heartbreaking stuff. Because if you want to grow, then you truly need to work on yourself, and for that anything, you need to do something rather than nothing at all. I used to always say things like, I'm grateful for the pain everyone in my life caused me, because I wouldn't be who I am today without that pain. Now, I reflect on that and see how wrong it was to speak that way. But that's what I knew then, and I am compassionate with myself for believing that at the time and not knowing any better. So let me go on the record and correct myself. Never be grateful for the person who causes you pain. Be grateful for yourself. Be grateful for the endurance you displayed in healing. Be grateful for all the skills you acquired as you healed from the pain activated within you. Never give credit for who you are now to the pain someone chose to throw your way. It's not about them not deserving that kind of recognition. Remember, the focus isn't on them. It's on you. You get the credit for being the strong person you are now. Sometimes God takes you on a journey you didn't know you needed to bring you everything you ever wanted. Trust the plan. Trust the process. Embrace the hurt. It is the only thing keeping you moving forward. Calm down. You'll be okay. It's hurting, but you have the strength to fight it. You're doing great. It's going to take some time, but it's going to be okay. You are going to be okay. You may not believe it now, but you're going to be so better off from this point on. Be kind to yourself. It's okay to feel whatever you are feeling. This will pass, and you will feel whole again. With time, everything will be fine. You are stronger than you realize. This is the best thing that could happen to you. You just don't know it yet. You'll love and be loved again. You are worthy and deserving of so much more. Think about the reality of the situation rather than the fantasy. You will experience so much joy and excitement. How you feel now will pass. Hang in there. You always have yourself. And you are always enough. What's meant for you won't pass you by. Process the pain, grieve, and learn the lesson. You will be fine soon. Be grateful that you were able to feel so deeply. The best is yet to come. With every heartbreak, you are one stop close to meeting the right person. Trust me, you'll be okay. Being alone is a gift that shows you how much you are worth. Embrace it. There is no timeline for healing. You are not overreacting. It's okay to feel this way. Embrace it. You'll feel a little stronger tomorrow. So your whole life will be a series of healing. That's how it works. You live, 
You uncover a layer, you are asked to go deeper, and you sink into a part of you that feels even more true than the person you were a year, a month, a week, a minute before. In many ways, it's about shedding. Shedding what holds you back from experiencing your life as it's happening. Shedding societal conditioning, shedding walls, blocks. Healing will not be linear. It will not arrive one day in perfect form. It's a becoming, an unraveling, a putting together only to unspool a bit more. Stop trying to be done with the work of becoming yourself. Stop rushing it. You have a lifetime to master it. You're meant to have a lifetime to become, unfold, tense, and unfold again. It all belongs. It's all part of it. Maybe you need a break once in a while, but don't quit becoming truer versions of yourself. You don't have to become better, just truer, more you, more expressed, more free. You're right to think life isn't fair, that doing good things still somehow manages to bring pain into your life, or how the right decisions can still lead you to a dead end. But even then, hold on to the hope of doing good. Hold on to your beliefs of doing what you feel is right. Don't be a slave to how people react. Don't lose yourself because the world didn't reward you. You might have saved a stranger's life. You might have inspired someone to choose a better path. You might have reminded someone their life is worth living for. Because that's what it means to genuinely do good. It's not about the medals or awards you can count on your shelf. It's about the lives you're changing little by little. It's not about the results you see. It's about the chances you're giving to people so they can one day look back and find it in themselves to overcome their hardness. Your life isn't defined by what you're receiving. It's defined by what you're willing to give to people. So don't believe for a second that you doing good changes nothing. It changes something in others you won't immediately see, and it makes you a quiet inspiration you should always be proud of. Your perception in life is key. You will face struggles, difficult situations, tough choices, and uncertain roads. There will be times when you find yourself lost somewhere on in-between roads, caught up in the ifs and maybe of life. Sometimes you'll find that life has completely steered off your expectations and somehow you're resting on unknown pillars. In the times where it seems that life has disagreed with what you had planned for yourself, it is your perception that keeps you afloat. It is the way that you perceive life's decisions that hold you back or pull you through the period of the unknown. You lose yourself to despair when you push your soul towards fearing and panicking over what you cannot control. Set yourself free to waves of life. It will guide you, lead you, steer you into the direction of where you are destined to be. If you perceive life to be against you, then the moment you feel you have lost control over matters, you will engulf anxiety and stammer with fear. Yet if you believe that life is always guiding you, the fear will be lost and knowledge will become your companion. Everything. Your highs, your lows, your happiest moments and the most painful ones, your failures and your successes, your losses and your gains. Just remember, people can't come in and out of your life for no reason. The lessons you learn and the growth that you experience is never spontaneous. It's always meant to be. There's a higher purpose, a goal, a final destination, or a peak in your journey that you will have no idea of until you reach it. But for that, you need to climb the mountain. For that, you need to look for a deeper meaning. For that, you need to pay attention to everything and everyone around you, especially those that love you and leave you. There are some lessons that only people and their existence can give you. There are some lessons that only pain can bring out. There are some lessons that the biggest joys of your life will reveal to you. And there are some lessons that you never knew were lessons until they walked out of your life. Think about it. Only then will you stop treating your growth as an accident and start appreciating it as the most beautiful journey created just for you. Life does not always go in a straight line. Things get messy and tangled, and our paths twist and turn in many directions. The right things happen at the wrong time, and opportunities get passed by. Some things happen that we just cannot understand in the moment, no matter how badly we want an answer. 
and some things that we wish would happen just never do. Life can be a little messy, but that does not mean that it cannot be wonderful too. Because even in the messiness, even in the mistakes and missed chances, even in the midst of not knowing what to do or where to turn, there are still so many beautiful moments. There is still love and joy and light. There is still laughter and kindness. So maybe life is messy. But maybe it does not need to be anything else. Maybe it is in all of the messiness that we can see all of the things that matter most of all. The greatest gift you can offer the world is your truest.co, most authentic self. You were created exactly as you are, because who you are is who this world needs. It's your wit, your humor, your grace, your passion. It's the fire that burns inside of you. It's your fierce courage and irrepressible spirit. It's the way you love with your whole entire being unapologetically, fully without fear. It's your unique presence, your divine signature. It's the way your smile can change a person's entire day. How your heart pours out love without expectations or conditions. It's the wisdom that lives inside of you, your voice, your words, your ideas, your creativity. You're an original, unmatched, incomparable, second to none. Let go of who you think you're supposed to be. Step into your truest self and explore every hidden depth of your inner being. Be who you are. Offer what only you can give. You will never be too much or not enough for the people worthy of experiencing the fullest expression of you. I know life can be hard, that things can appear terribly unfair. Said that there are people I in this world who you may believe have it better than you. But recognize this is only projection. And it's a way of releasing you from doing the work of creating a life that feels good on you. Right where you are. Right now. Exactly as you are. Complaining may feel good. May be a pressure release. But ultimately, the only person that is being harmed by your complaints is you. When you interpret your experiences as wholly negative, you are harming you. When you lack forgiveness or softness or gentleness or compassion, it hurts you. You can keep the world accountable while still giving yourself peace, rest, and a generative life. You do not need to suffer in order to deserve your joy. And if you are constantly fixing your eyes on the horizon thinking it must be better easier for everyone else but you, then you won't sink in right here and make right here beautiful, worthwhile, and lovely. You miss it all entirely. Don't do that. You deserve freeing life just as much as anyone else. Same days you'll find that you are struggling with yourself. It'll seem like you have taken more steps back than you have forward. You'll find that your heart is sitting confused between two chapters and your mind is stuck between thinking back and looking forward. Sometimes it will really seem like there is a war within yourself, between you and yourself, your mind and your heart, logic and emotions. At times you may even find that you are struggling to understand yourself. On those days... I hope you remind yourself that it's okay if you don't have everything figured out in this moment. The confusion and chaos is all part of the process of growing and maturing in life. It makes you human to break over one matter and recreate yourself through another, to lose yourself somewhere and find yourself from elsewhere. Don't be too harsh on yourself in the chaos that comes with the process of becoming. The hardest thing you will have to do in life is to let go of the people you may want to hold on to. Sometimes, you will have to settle for loving someone from a distance, and that is okay. Because if you cannot show up for another human being the way you know you should, if someone cannot love you the way you need to be loved right now, if circumstance or space or the messiness of life is getting in the way of giving your whole self and nothing less than that to another, huh, man being, then you have to be honest. Do not suffer. Kate, your love. Do not ignore the way someone makes you feel about yourself in order to keep them in your life. Do not ask for something to be more than it can be right now. Instead, appreciate it for what it was. Appreciate the lessons it grew within you. Appreciate the beauty you were able to feel and appreciate the fact that in those ways, in those memories, it will be yours forever.
If you would like to change your life, you must first change the way you think about your life. Thoughts are not just thoughts. They are bridges and doors and entryways and foundations. They magnetize and repel. They can build a house and tear it down. They can energize momentum or keep you idling within your own little world forever. Thoughts are investments and they are decisions. The mind will generate an endless series of options, some inspiring and others terrifying. And so you must choose. You must choose what you will return to, what you will believe in, what you will place weight on. Because thoughts create feeling, and feeling creates desire, and desire creates action, and action creates reward, and reward creates more desire. And before you know it, a thought became a torch that led you down the path that is your life. If you would like to change your life, you must first change the way you think about your life. There was never another way. The deepest form of self-care is building a life you are in love with, and that is often a very unbeautiful thing. It means making a spreadsheet of your debt, and enforcing a morning routine, and cooking yourself healthy meals, and no longer running from your problems, and calling the distraction a solution. It means looking your failures and disappointments square in the eye and restrategising. It is not satiating your immediate desires. It is letting go. It is choosing new. It is disappointing some people. It is making sacrifices for others. It is living in a way that other people won't so you can live in a way that other people can't. It is becoming the person you know you want and are meant to be. Someone who knows that salt baths and chocolate cake are ways to enjoy life, not escape from it. Temporary. Everything. All of it. Even the best of it. Especially the best of it. We only have so many years to know human love and do human things. Love them. All of them. Even the painstaking ones. They, too, will not last. They are human. They are the experience. The insecurity. The experience. The heartache the experience, the confusion, the experience, the joy, the experience, the risk, the experience. There is nothing lost if we learn something from it. Your willingness to fail is proportionate to your potential to gain and to grow. The timer never stops running. All you will regret is not reaching harder for the things you actually wanted while they were still in front of you. Get excited about your goals. Focus on productivity rather than activity. Rest when required. Build stronger relationships. Step out of your comfort zone. Take on new challenges with courage. Hold yourself accountable. Develop a healthy sleeping pattern. Adapt to your environment and resources. Choose faith over fear. Let go of what no longer contributes to your joy. Create better habits. Keep a routine in place. Encourage positive energy in your circle. Smile, laugh, and love often. Count your blessings regularly. Work with passion and purpose. Try out new things. Upskill. Travel when you can. Live within your means. Spend more time with your loved ones. Take good care of your mind, body, and soul. Make happiness, healing, and kindness priorities. Meditate. Be humble. Embrace the present. Subscribe our channel to help us reach 500 subscribers. Donate us super thanks to support us. Type Amen to affirm. Thanks for watching.